It's nice to have you with us. Now, we did see that big move last week for stocks, best week of the year for U.S. stocks. We had a record here in Canada. As we mentioned, though, the U.S. futures are pointing to a potentially softer start. For more on the mood of the markets, let's bring in Scott Rennie, Senior Global Equity Strategist at Wells Fargo Investment Institute. Scott, nice to have you with us. First off, what's been your general take on the resilience of this stock market? Uh, well, John, it's been pro pretty resilient for some time. And, and as you know, from our previous conversations, um, you know, in our opinion, anyway, stocks aren't cheap. Uh, that doesn't mean that they, they can't get more expensive. Uh, certainly, the valuations are below where they were uh, in the tech bubble in early 2000. So, um, you know, we don't want to be jumping in here and just buying the S&P 500. We want to look further under the hood and try to do some things uh, at the sector level. We continue to uh, trim uh, from technology and communication services in particular. Uh, consumer discretionary as the sector has kind of faded a little bit here, but uh, those stocks aren't cheap either. So we're taking those funds. Uh, we're buying industrials, materials, energy, which over the course of the last month or so, you know, the recent past, uh, they've done well. Uh, we also like health care. So those are some of the things we're doing, but but certainly we're not uh, jumping in here and buying the S&P 500 at these uh, levels. So you're shifting to some sectors of interest, but in terms of the overall level of the market, you're concerned. So is that that you're concerned about tech, which has that outsized influence in the S&P 500? Yeah, I mean, tech looks, you know, pretty expensive to us. Communication services does. So, uh, you know, clearly technology is is by far the biggest sector out there. And and we're just, um, you know, is tech going to be a place to be long term? Sure. And, you know, we're carrying a full weight uh, there, which is, you know, let's call it 28 percent. So, you know, you've got a heavy weighting if you're just even weight technology. But uh, we're a little nervous about being overweight here. Um, at, at these at these high levels or what we consider high levels. But you're so it, um, let me ask it this way. Are you shifting any money out of the stock market at this point? Well, you know, we've been um, what we've been doing is in the, I mentioned the sectors that we're trimming back on uh, and the sectors then that we're going into that have that have been underperformers. Um, any funds that are left over, we're parking those in short-term fixed income. So, um, you know, we don't like uh, the long bond down here at these yields. Uh, we're neutral, intermediate. And so really in fixed income, you know, the only thing we're doing is using short-term fixed income for purely for a parking spot. And you and I have talked before in this, it's been a while since this has happened, but, um, you know, we, we think there's going to be some downside volatility here. And if that does occur, uh, we're certainly going to move funds from that short-term parking spot, short-term fixed income, uh, back into equity. So now whether we're going to get a chance to do that, I think we will at some point, uh, but certainly it's been, uh, it's been a long wait for a reasonable pullback lately. What's the, what is the biggest concern you have? Is it an economic concern? It is, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, we're looking for um, um, consumer spending to slow. We think consumers, most of them, certainly the bottom 80 percent on the wage scale, uh, are pretty tapped out. They've been borrowing. Uh, they've been going into 401ks and using money uh, for that to, to, to fuel consumption. Uh, we think that's going to come to an end. We think the labor market's going to weaken. Now, you know, certainly you look at these initial jobless claims and they're, you know, let's call it 210,000. I mean, that's a that's a low number, but we think. Um, the labor market's going to weaken. Consumer spending is going to weaken. Um, this first quarter GDP should be somewhere in the twos. You know, we might even see a, a two handle in the second quarter. But uh, we think toward the end of the year, the third and fourth quarter, you're likely to get, you know, one point something in terms of GDP. So we're looking for just a little bit less than 2% GDP this year, which which is below the consensus. So um, I think the consensus is a little too optimistic on economic growth a little too optimistic on earnings growth. And, uh, you know, after this big run, it's not a, a bold call to say, hey, we could easily have a 10% pullback here. They happen pretty often um, historically. So, you know, five, seven, 10%, you know, we, we think we're gonna have an opportunity here. Okay, and then, uh, you know, there's been all this debate around what ultimately happens with interest rates, which is another stock market catalyst. Uh, if If you are concerned about the health of the consumer, the economic outlook, uh, does that not build the case for interest rates this year? And I guess, how does the market think about rates 
and the direction of rates and the actual movement on rates after the amount of conversation we've already had about that in the stock market. Well, you know, we're 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 not trying to be too cute here, but I think in the in the near term, let's call it over the next uh, six months as the economy slows, uh, we're likely to see the yield on the on the ten year bond drop. But toward the end of this year, and as we look into twenty twenty five, you know, we think the U S. economy is going to be doing better. Uh, the global economy, hopefully, you know, Europe and China can get their act together and participate in in a more synchronized global growth type of situation in 2025, which we think is going to be the case. We think we're going to have uh, could be very late this year, could be in 2025. We think we're going to have an opportunity four and a half, five percent on the 10-year Treasury to lock in some longer-term yields there. Um, you know, 430 isn't all that far from those levels, but um, we're certainly looking for an opportunity to. To, to lock in at some higher rates, which we think we're going to get when uh, there's a little bit of uh, clarity as far as uh, what the economy looks like globally. And I think that won't be until late this year or in early 2025. And then just a question about how the political consideration plays into the stock market in 2024 as we get closer to the fall. People will be talking a lot about what happens in presidential politics. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're all going to be really sick of uh, political commercials here, probably sooner rather than later. Uh, this is going to be a pretty, pretty rough election cycle, I think. But you know, I'll stereotype here, and and typically, um, uh, let's say the market thinks the Republicans are, are going to win the presidency uh, and control Congress, the market tends to do better, lower taxes, uh, less regulation is is kind of the Republican theme typically. On the Democrat side, uh, higher taxes, more regulation. Uh, the market tends to be at, react a little bit negatively. But as you come into the uh, election and, and if you know, if there's a, a, a tight race, you get the winner, the market has some sort of a reaction, which is probably anticipating a little bit ahead of time. But the thing is, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks after the election, the economy and investors start saying, okay, that's all well and good. What's going to happen uh, to earnings in the economy over the next 12 months? So people get back into that because, let's face it, uh, the U.S. economy, it's like, you know, a giant aircraft carrier. It's like the, the QE2. Once it gets going in a certain direction, it's it takes some time to steer and to change course. And I think by the time the election comes and we're a few weeks past it, you know, the U.S. economy is going to be on a on a pretty clear course of, of recovery, modest growth with modest inflation. That ship's going to be hard to turn for whoever uh, is president in 2025. So uh, I think it's going to be a brief, um, um, it'll have a brief effect on the market. It'll probably have a lesser effect on, um, on the economy. But of course, you know, if the Democrats control uh, uh, Congress and the presidency. That's one thing. The Republicans, if they're, you know, we have a Republican president and the Republicans control the Senate and the House, you know, that might be another thing. But it's going to take a while before you see those effects in the actual economy. Okay. A lot to consider.